Welcome back to the show. As the world slowly comes to understand the horrific atrocities China continues to commit against the Uyghur people in its own country, reports now indicate that they are targeting those that live abroad as well. Salih Hudayar, the democratically elected prime minister of the East Turkestan government in exile, joins us now in studio to discuss these issues and more. Prime Minister, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. So give us an update on what is happening in uh, in China with the Uyghur people. I mean, we've heard multiple reports about the genocide that is taking place. I mean, we've spoken to a plethora of people about the specifics of those reports and China's tactics in the region that the Uyghur people live. But now there are reports that indicate that uh, the Chinese government is targeting Uyghur, the Uyghur minority outside of their own borders as well. What do we know about this? Yes. Uh, firstly, um, I just want to clarify, China is not actually doing it in their own country. Um, uh, our country is called East Turkestan, mm -hmm. which the Chinese occupied and renamed to Xinjiang, meaning the new territory. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, the Uyghurs are still the majority in East Turkestan. However, um, coming back to the Chinese government targeting Uyghurs, uh, this is nothing new. Uh, mm -hmm. This has been actually going on for decades. Uh, the Chinese government initially um, began to target political activists, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to harass them, to prevent them from, uh, you know, engaging in um, democratic activities here in the West. Um, however, as more and more people began to flee East Turkestan, the Chinese government uh, began to, you know, harass uh, individual people, whether they're activists or not, mm -hmm. to prevent them, um, well, really to coerce them, intimidate them, and to prevent them from, uh, you know, speaking out against the Chinese government, while at the same time to, you know, lure them back. Um, in many cases, in the Middle East, what they did is, starting in 2017, uh, they began to tell Uyghurs that were living mm -hmm. abroad, come back. Um, they would arrest their parents, and then they'd be like, well, let your parents go if you come back. Wow. And some people fell for this trap, and they've disappeared while others who failed to do this, they were uh, deported by, um, you know, governments like the uh, government of Egypt and mm. other uh, Middle Eastern countries, and even Turkey right now, they're slowly, uh, um, you know, deporting Uyghurs. Mm -hmm. Wow, so it's been this sort of uh, calculated um, plot to sort of lure them back into a region that they are comfortable exerting power over. That's interesting. As, so as these reports have begun to trickle out and gain sort of a little bit of the momentum in media and in the public eye that they deserve, what sorts of reactions have you seen from, Democrat, from democratically elected governments, both obviously in the United States, but then globally as well, from the global community? What kind of reaction are you getting? Well, the international community has um, began in issuing sanctions. I mean, the U.S. government mm -hmm. uh, recognized the genocide, the Canadian parliament and the parliaments of the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. um, last, a uh, couple of weeks ago, the yes. U.S. government, the EU, uh, the UK and Canada, um, they engaged in, you know, a couple of sanctions against Chinese officials. However, this is not enough. Mm -hmm. um, the Chinese government is still continuing the genocide. They're still continuing to harass and target Uyghurs inside and outside East Turkestan. So there needs to be more uh, strong and concrete actions um, aside from, you know, just sanctions or condemnations to get China to stop these atrocities. Give us an example of some. What kind of specific actions would you like to see taken? One of the things we uh, are asking the U.S. government to do is to uh, r raise the East Turkestan issue at the U.N. Security Council, mm -hmm. to support our case against China at the International Criminal Court, mm -hmm. and to uh, you know boycott the upcoming Beijing 2022 Olympics, mm -hmm. and to um, you know prevent uh, Chinese goods and products that are uh, most likely made with Uyghur slave labor from coming into the United States or other Western countries. Sure. I mean, as as we've seen the past couple of months change uh, from one administration to the next, what sort of a difference have you seen? I mean, uh, to the best of my understanding, the Trump administration was quite uh, defined in their approach to the CCP and to uh, the Uyghur violation, the violations taking place against the Uyghur people by the CCP. What kind of CCP? What sort of reaction have you gotten from the Biden administration, and do you think there is a qualitative difference there? Um, initially, we were a little bit worried, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, however, uh, Secretary Blinken has reiterated um, uh, Secretary Pompeo's stance that mm -hmm. this is a genocide, and he's actually been, um, you know, uh, pushing the other 
governments across the world mm -hmm. to you know uh, act on this as well. So um, I think uh, as far as U.S. policy on our issue, it's, it has not um, changed too much. Sure. And have you seen the uh, Chinese government respond to this in any way? I mean, it's interesting to sort of see how they've begun to react to it as the subject matter has been brought up more and more on the international stage. It seems that they've opted to deflect, in, 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 especially in conversations with the United States government, deflect some of the United States' own social issues back on the matter, saying, who are you to judge what we're doing? Look at the problems in your own country, which is sort of an interesting tactical approach. But what have you been seeing? Yes, the Chinese government has been, you know, uh, always deflecting uh, its own pro uh, its problems on the, you know. But um, with the sanctions, you know, the Chinese government in turn, you know, uh, put a bunch of uh, sanctions against uh, not just American official, uh, American officials, American in, you know uh, citizens, mm -hmm. but also European citizens and others um, that had been uh, vocal about uh, the Chinese genocide, so uh, China's genocide in East Turkestan. So uh, there seems to be some um, you know reaction, but at the same time, the Chinese government is also. Uh, putting a lot of economic uh, leverage, boycotting uh, Western companies' goods That's right. um, to prevent them from, you know, boycotting Chinese goods that were made with slave labor. Wow, yeah. So, I mean, I, I guess we're seeing just the, the equivalent of a trade war begin over these human rights violations issues. It will be obviously interesting to continue to see where it goes. So, I in the meantime, though, you are the founder of an organization called the National Awakening Movement, which has to do with East Turkestan and reclaiming independence for that nation. Can you explain a little bit about what that is? Yes, the East Turkestan National Awakening Movement is a global uh, nonviolent movement dedicated to restoring uh, East Turkestan's independence as a pluralistic uh, secular republic that mm -hmm. guarantees uh, human rights and freedom for all of its people, whether they're Uyghurs, Kazakhs, Kyrgyz, Tatars, or others. Mm -hmm. And where can people go to find out more information about this? Um, people can visit us at www.east-turkestan.net or nationalawakening.org or follow us on Twitter at etexilegov or etawakening. Well, thank you so much, Prime Minister, for joining us this morning. We so appreciate your input on this important issue. We wish you luck with your mission. We will continue to bring light to what is such an important subject that has for a long time not gotten the attention it deserves. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Coming up next, we will be speaking with Pastor Brian Gibson about an Easter message gone wrong. What did Senator Raphael Warnock say that forced him to delete his Easter Sunday tweet? We'll be taking a look at that coming right up after the break. You're watching Just the News AM. Real America's Voice is a news platform dedicated to keeping people informed. The U.S. will have enough COVID-19 vaccines available to vaccinate every adult in America. Headlines from here in the U.S. and around the globe. Protesters are continuing to ignore threats of years in prison and lethal force by police. Full coverage of live events. So 92% of that $2 trillion spending bill is unrelated to COVID. Real news. Honest views. Real America's Voice.